Hello and welcome to this brief presentation where we derive a relationship between linear and angular acceleration. This relates to a previous presentation where we derived a relationship between linear and angular velocity. And again, this presentation just overviews a standard derivation from an engineering reference source. The formula we're going to prove is A is equal to alpha R where A is the linear acceleration, so that varies from zero linear acceleration at the centre of the disc to a maximum linear acceleration at the rim of the disc. In other words, the larger the radius from the centre of the disc, the larger the linear acceleration. But the angular acceleration is assumed constant. So here's a relationship between linear and angular acceleration. Again, a very standard proof taken from a textbook. But I'll just overview the steps involved here and how the final equation shown here is derived. So let's consider again a rotating disc or a flywheel. It's rotating about point O on a diagram shown here. At the instant shown, the flywheel has a uniform angular acceleration, alpha, shown here. Whilst a point on the rim has a uniform linear acceleration, A. And that's shown here at point A and at point B. So be aware that although the accelerations are constant, the velocities will not be. So in other words, both the linear and angular velocities at point B will be greater than the linear and angular velocities at point A because the flywheel is being accelerated between A and B. Let's let the angular velocity at point A be omega A and the angular velocity at point B be omega B. We know from our previous work the angular acceleration alpha would be omega b minus omega a, all divided by the time taken. Let's now let the linear velocity at point A be VA and the linear velocity at point B be VB. So our linear velocity equation for A would be VB minus VA divided by T. So now I have a angular acceleration equation labelled 1 and a linear acceleration equation labelled 2. But we know from our previously derived relationship between linear and angular velocity that Vb would equal to omega b multiplied by r, call that equation 3, and Va is equal to omega a multiplied by r, and I've called that equation 4. If we now substitute equation 3 and equation 4 into equation 2, we now find that the linear acceleration A is omega BR minus omega AR divided by T. And the next line we simply factorised on R. Now from equation 1 above, we know that alpha is equal to omega b minus omega a divided by t. So we can replace this part of equation 5 with alpha. And so we end up with the final relationship between linear acceleration and angular acceleration. a is equal to alpha r. And that's a very useful relationship that underpins lots of work in terms of kinematic and dynamic analysis that we'll review in other presentations. So here's a brief illustration of how to use the formula A is equal to alpha R as derived on the previous slide. So in a laboratory experiment, the rim of a flywheel was found to have the linear acceleration of 1500 millimeters per second squared. If the flywheel's diameter is 30 centimeters, we've got to calculate the angular acceleration of the flywheel. So extract the information from the question, 
the linear acceleration a is 1500 millimeters per second squared so divide that by a thousand that's 1.5 meters per second squared the diameter d of the flywheel is 30 centimeters divide that by 100 so that's 0 0.3 meters to find the radius we simply divide the diameter by two so the radius to the periphery of the flywheel is 0 0.15 meters just notice for reference i'm using capital r here for radius but lowercase r is used on my diagram so from our formula for linear acceleration a is equal to alpha r we've got to calculate the angular acceleration here so rearranging for alpha that's simply a divided by r above the Linear acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared. You divide that by the radius r, 0.15 meters. So the angular acceleration is 10 radians per second squared.